We've got a bladder stone on this little girl. She is a little six pound Yorkie something or another. She presented to us because she had been straining to urinate um, and sadly had had uh, a bit of some problems with uh, constant frequent urination, seemed to be uncomfortable and pain um, painful when she was urinating. We did some samples and found that she had uh, a little bit of a bacterial urinary tract infection, um, but just with the nature of what she was doing, we decided to also take x-rays and found that she has a decent sized bladder stone. What I did was I, I made a midline incision and I am finding what we call the linea alba. And then this is actually kind of the midpoint in the abdomen where we really don't have any muscle and it actually allows for easy access into into the uh, abdomen. This is her little bladder right here. So you're removing urine right so now. So I'm taking urine out because it's in my way. It doesn't need to be there. running into the edge of the stone. So the stone is in there or it's is it below? In, it's in the bladder. Okay. You can have that now. That's all yours. So what's the risk of keeping it in there, not doing surgery? It causes a lot of inflammation and a lot of pain. And this is something that causes a lot of trauma to the inside of the bladder. So, super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Definitely needs to be removed so it, it makes it so a better quality of life for this little girl. So I try to drape this off so that way this is outside or exteriorized from the body. Okay. Any potential urine or contaminants that might potentially come out from this bladder I want to be caught by these lap sponges. All right, that should be good. I make a little incision over, I call this the apex of the bladder. How prevalent is this in dogs? Certain breeds is very prevalent. Schnauzers are a big offender of this. Um, otherwise, there are certain dogs when they're fed particular types of diets that this might actually be a problem for those particular dogs um, and how they metabolize their diets. In some dogs, it's and it also depends on, on what's going on. If they get a urinary tract infection, there are certain infections that potentially will lead to them forming stones. Uh, some dogs, it's, it's just a metabolic thing. It's just what they do. It's how they metabolize. Okay. Oh, this thing is ugly. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. So you can see why that would cause a lot of irritation inside of the bladder. We're going to pass this off. Ta da! It's like a piece of paper. I know, doesn't it? It almost does. It seems like it took up so much of the bladder. It was a good portion of the bladder. So, now what I do in this case is I actually will sew this bladder shut at this point. You have to make sure that you don't have. Uh, that I don't put any uh, sutures that actually are touching the inside of the bladder, if you will. So I actually remain just within the wall of the bladder because if you do have sutures that are present within the inside of the bladder, you end up with um, a nidus for possible infection or reformation of stone to occur. So, do all these sutures externally. So what are the signs and symptoms if somebody suspects that their dog has a gallbladder? Uh, um, urinary stone, a bladder stone. I mean bladder stone. A lot of times they'll be straining to urinate. You might see blood in the urine. Uh, they have what they call plaque so they urinate frequently. There's a lot of times an increased urgency. 
Um, let's see here, many times you'll find that they'll have these chronic recurrent urinary tract infections or these chronic recurrent urinary symptoms. So some people might diagnose them initially with just a urinalysis and say, yep, they've got a urinary tract infection. And in many cases, they do have a urinary tract infection. Uh, but if you've got a stone that's present in there, just as you saw the external surface of that stone was so lumpy and bumpy, there's a lot of bacteria that can sit around the surface of that stone and the body can form like a mucus layer around it. They call it like a glycocalyx layer. And it makes it very difficult for the uh, antibiotics that you give a dog to be able to actually penetrate into and around that stone. And so you have these constant chronic urinary tract infections that will form. So if you have symptoms that are just recurrent, or the, the straining, blood in the urine, pain when the urinating, increased frequency, accidents in the house, those are signs where potentially they might have a urinary stone, in which case taking x-rays would be ideal. Now, you can only find bladder stones in cases where you have calcium oxalate or struvite. If you have cysteine or urate stones, you cannot see them on x-rays. They don't show up on x-rays, so you actually have to do a different form of uh, evaluation instead where you do like a double contrast study. So that's my first layer, that was a simple continuous. And then what I end up doing is I place what we call a Cushing layer over the top of this. I'm just gonna leak check this now at this point to make sure that there's actually no leaking from this after all is said and done. See the surface of my incision on the bladder here? Yes. So I've basically got two layers that run back and forth. And so the bladder, is that something that usually heals up pretty well? Yeah, actually it usually heals up pretty well. You can actually see that it's got some really nice vasculature. Yeah. So I find that it heals up pretty quickly. Go just kind of inject alongside the edge of the incision. So Abby's doing this with a sterile needle. She's injecting a bunch of fluid in there. So if you actually watch like my incision line, we're looking for signs where there's any fluid that's coming out. Okay, that's probably good. So I do a little some squishing back and forth and I look to see if potentially there's any fluid coming out of there. You know, stress the bladder and that wall a little bit and it looks beautiful. That's it. Can you grab your other fluid for flushing? We're gonna flush off the surfaces again. Dilution is a solution for pollution. Flush, 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 flush some more, and that's then flush cool, again. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right. <laughs> I've been doing this for a little while. <laughs> so just put it back in. Oh, yeah, just put it right back inside this, the body. And she's going to feel like a million bucks after this. And then I, I just do a quick little once over. I just make sure there's nothing else abnormal in here that I'm missing. Okay, so will these be the stitches that you see? No, all of these stitches are going to be actually uh, buried within the body wall. So I have, my first layer is my linea alba. This is the holding layer for the abdomen. The second layer after that's going to be the subcutaneous layer. It's kind of like the fat layer that's in between your skin in your abdomen. And that's one that uh, I have a little bit harder time with this little gal because she's very thin. My third layer is going to be the, it's the skin layer, but I do a subcuticular. So I actually end up putting the edges of the skin together nicely so that way she doesn't have any external stitches. And again, these will be the same stitches that just are absorbed? They will. Yep, every single one of them will just resorb.
So good. How satisfying. This is my most satisfying part. Absolutely. That, taking the bladder sort of was the most satisfying, but then after yeah. that, I love this when you can like close it up and it looks really cute and nice and neat. It does. And then, still got my little tail here. So tie off the end of my incision. And then I bury this, so you don't have this little knot poking out. It's gonna go basically just right along the edge of where the incision, or excuse me, where that knot was. You pull, and boom, done. So now I just do a little bit of glue on the external surface, and that's it. And what's that? This is a local block. To help with the pain? Correct. I'm trying to help numb this up after surgery, so hopefully this pup can't actually feel this incision so much for the next several hours. Ta-da! Yay! <laughs> Great job. Good job, Sally.